Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Ryan, gonna talk about dieting. Haven't talked about fat loss and nutrition in a while, and I wanna talk about some observations I've seen in the community of fitness, and for those that I train primarily. As as of some of you may not may or may not know, I've been training people one-on-one, -on -one, just regular people for the last 14, 14 years. And there's a lot of different things I've seen when it comes to weight loss, weight gain, taking body fat percentage. I can, I've done body fat percentage thousands and thousands of times of so many times and there's just a lot of variation in people you know you have people that are skinny you have people that are fat you have people that hold fat easily and um, and also combining some of this information that I've you know listened to YouTube listening to Alan Aragon and uh, reading Lyle McDonald's books Kiefer car backloading um, listening to Mark Bell talk uh, paleo solution with Rob Wolf uh, man, Fat Burning Man show. Listening to him over at uh, the the Kraken, the Paleo Solution for with Rob Wolf. Uh, his name is, God, what is his name? Anyway, super super smart guy. Uh, lots of great information, and you know I've, I've come to a lot of different conclusions. I just wanted to share some thoughts, and you know you can put yourself in any boat or any category of what you want to believe in. Uh, recently, Powerlifting to Win Izzy put out a video about kind of Powerlifters Toolbox when it comes to dieting and some agree or disagree with what he said uh, the thing to consider is that everyone is very unique and it really does come down to compliance that's probably the main topic of his video and it's sort of kind of what I feel is probably the major point of understanding dieting is really compliance is whatever you can follow on a consistent basis is going to have the greatest influence because the body change is extremely slow going up in weight going down in weight getting muscle losing muscle getting weak getting strong you know, I actually I take that back. Getting weak and getting strong happen very quickly, neurological change. But when it comes to actual physical change, that's when it's very, very slow. Like how much body fat, how big your waist can get. Because you have to remember, as we know, or some of uh, just to refresh your memory, one pound of fat is about 3,500 calories, and um, to have a surplus of 35 calories, 3,500 calories every single day. It's probably unrealistic unless you're an extremely large human being. And even then, it's very difficult because the body has this way of kind of bringing itself back to homeostasis. So keep in mind that a lot of the time, it's really just about trying to keep your body back to where it is. In that case, is sort of equaling calories. But with the way the lifestyle is, uh, said lifestyle forces us to be very, very, basically not move. And then food is very easily to consume. Or food you can basically eat food that bypasses normal uh, appetite, uh, you know, normal appetite kind of signals. So like eating just as examples, Dorito chips, cakes, candies, junk food, processed foods. Just make it so that you can eat lots of foods very quickly uh, without necessarily feeling full right away. So you end up eating more calories. And and then the very this one I want to talk about is the variation with people when it comes to this thing because a lot of the time. Some people will just get full. I mean, I've seen this a lot of time. My wife, uh, her her family, her side of the family, they just end up kind of staying at a certain spot because they just stop eating. Uh, I have a friend that's similar. I am, uh, again, just sharing my thoughts and sort of my opinions and my experiences that I will just not stop eating. I kind of have a sort of compulsive behavior when it comes to food. Uh, but that could just be the way I train. It could be my environment. It could be lack of discipline. Call it whatever you want. But uh, I wrote some notes here. I'm going to read them off to you. Genetic variation, genetic variation, lifestyle and clients that I've trained is that some people just won't get fat. They won't gain weight. People, there are two kinds of people. There's a person that has very large fluctuations in weight. Large fluctuations in weight will just define as more than seven pounds within a given uh, to within a given four to six week period, you know, or maybe a six month period. Let's say 10 pounds within six months, you know, up or down. And then there's people who stay within a tight range, typically within five pounds. Uh, some people go up, some people go down. So basically, I've had some clients who basically just stay around one, I have one client, he's about 175. And uh, for him to be fat, it's essentially like 178. For him to be skinny or not as fat is 173. Uh, for me, it's typically like 205. For me to be skinny or feel a little bit leaner, it's about 190. Uh, well, low 190. So you can see there's about a more than a 10 pound or maybe 7 to 10 pounds up or down. And these are just, again, total anecdotal. And you kind of relate it to your own experience because uh, a lot of people are not in the same lab. And I use the lab sort of, you know, 
uh, sort of loosely like my lab of working with people is that understand that some people just don't get fat people can keep a very lean figure like I don't know I'll just I'll make some assumptions and you can take it for face value I don't know these people like personally but you know like um, Max Tuning right very thin figure uh, he's, he's shredded and when he, I think he, I, saw, I saw some pictures in a video a long time ago where he was not as shredded, but he was still pretty small, his frame. Same thing with Omar Esau. They tend to have a, you know, what, what do you want to call them, fat or soft is, sure, soft and fat re, improve composition, but understand that their fat is like, you know, 190, and their skinny is like 180, you know, if that makes any sense. Or maybe they're actually about the same weight. They stay in a very tight range. Those are what those people are. And you got kind of the fatter people, bigger people. Um, and it seems to be obvious. It seems to be around the 200 mark people who stay above 200 pounds fairly easily. And that would be, I'm just using me as an example. Uh, there is, because in any given year, especially before I kind of learned about the paleo diet and learned about uh, different types of uh, low carb dieting, really. I found I found that I um what happened I found that I would have a 25 pound weight range fluctuation right when I believed in the whole calories in calories out camp and then when I realized and started doing the the low carb camp and really sticking to that I stayed in the lower weight range you know you can make assumptions on that too based on your own experience uh, my other note here some people simply put on muscle easier than others the mesomorph some people don't think that uh the mesotypes or the, well, I forgot what you call them, but anyways, there's ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And um, just to refresh your memory, ectomorph is basically super skinny, stays in a tight weight range. That's basically kind of like Omar Esau and um, Max Tuning. And then you got a mesomorph, and um, I don't know, so mesomorphs can easily be accused of taking steroids or taking drugs, um, but understand that people that are mesomorphs are athletic tend to be athletically gifted or just be very shredded they're just basically just jacked uh you know maybe they were fat at one point but understand that they just tend to put on muscle a lot easier than others you know some people just get fucking big they got big ass shoulders and not to say that um they're cheating or anything it's just more like they just just understand that you know when it comes to using drugs and just i'll touch on steroids just a little bit is that it is it'll just make you more of who you are so if you are you know, really, really muscular, and you take steroids, you're going to be more muscular. If you tend to be like an endomorph like me, where you're kind of put on, you hold on a good amount of fat, put on muscle fairly easily, but still hold, you know, high body fat percentage, relatively high body fat percentage, steroids will help you put on more muscle, but it's not going to make you look like a mesomorph unless you uh, go into a sort of extreme dieting or kind of like a bodybuilding cutting diet. And that kind of brings me to the next thing. Some people can uh, lower their, can... Some people can overcome their genetics with a, with with exercise, diet, and supplement measurement measurements or measures, meaning that some people can diet very hard, get very lean, and uh, look as shredded as a mesomorph, someone who's lean naturally, uh, that used to be an endomorph. And the problem is, is that they feel miserable. Again, also very anecdotal too, and you can take it for what it is. Is that people who tend to be have to kind of let's just assume have to work a lot harder than maybe someone who's a little bit more gifted um, will tend to feel more miserable because that is not their natural state and again you can also argue this I know I'm all over the place with talking about this but I just kinda want you to like again think for yourself and sort of take my blabbering here and, and, and kind of combine it with the stuff you've listened to on YouTube and the stuff you've learned for yourself and just kind of you know form your own opinion about kind of how nutrition works specifically for you along with my experience there are people who have great genetics to stay lean. I remember when I first started as a trainer, I met this guy. He freaking horseshoe triceps. I mean, he was like, I don't know, 19. Freaking shredded abs. I mean, he was crazy jacked, you know. And he, he said he ate, he ate bad. You know, I don't know this guy very much, but I just know he was freaking shredded. And he was fucking jacked, you know. And I'm just like, and, and, and that kind of person will have a tendency not to put on a bunch of body fat. Now, they can eat a lot. They will get fatter and they'll get quote-unquote soft. But their high body fat, their 14% body fat for that person would probably be 30, 25% for me, just as an example. Uh, pro athletes that work hard. Okay, so pro athletes, you know, they work hard, they get lean. It's not really necessarily part of their job necessarily. But, you know, like say basketball, baseball, football, whatnot. Um, 
the thing with these people is that and then they great genetics to stay lean so pro athletes that work hard sorry I'm all over the place average that work really hard so there are average people or maybe people with not as great genetics can overcome their kind of mediocre genetics versus the very high genetic people and almost get to a level of a lower working higher genetic person and um call it what you will it could be just a make-believe but meaning that sure there's one person with great genetics one person with average genetics and the average genetics can meet the expectation or meet a close to a level of someone with superior genetics but that person with superior genetics doesn't have to work as hard to be there and again this is all subjective because you can't really measure this right so how do we, let's put this in closing if you're still with me in this video is that no number one know your behavior you know, when it comes to dieting, genetic variation, different kinds of diets, carb backloading, whatever you want to call it, is that there is, we are different people. All of us are. And uh, sure, some people might have a different body type, same similar body types, but the lifestyle is inherently different. We have different jobs. Uh, we have different styles of working out. We have different sleeping patterns. We have different hobbies. And we have different... Um, kind of OCD bad behavior where we overeat or undereat or kind of bad dieting practices or lack of hydration and stuff like that. I think it's important to which my uh, that carbohydrate tolerance should be considered, but again, I, my opinion can change on this, but carbohydrate tolerance meaning will you put on more fat if you eat more carbs? Uh, uh, and another way of looking at it is maybe not necessarily as the carbs is making you fat. Are you the type of person that if you eat carbs, you can't stop? you know is that is that you and you know it's it's just like anything else like if you're I'm going to go on a tangent here you can start to eat really really bad and you can go on a tangent and just eat really bad regularly or and then you just have these bad habits you don't eat vegetables you eat too much bread rice and pasta and you eat too much ice cream you eat too much garbage uh and then it's kind of hard to eat healthy again right so you end up eating more calories now is it the calories is making you fat or is it just overconsumption in calories and is it the ca is it the overconsumption of calories making you fat or is it the overconsumption in carbs it's probably the calories but consider that the carbohydrates still influence eating behavior and eating behavior is probably the most important thing you need to really consider when it comes to nutrition and then um carb tolerance what I said earlier and how your lifestyle is at the moment because everyone is going through a different phase in their life you know whether you have kids whether you don't have kids whether you're you're you know tight on money whether you have extra money whether your job is running you ragged and you're working 16 hour shifts um, understand that like you have to adjust and just again to kind of share my experience and just kind of like what I'm doing now uh, I haven't put a training video up in a little while is uh, I do have some video that I still need to make. I just haven't had anything training wise interesting to talk about. But the thing is that when you're when you're trying to diet and you're or you're trying to change your body, I'm fucking like lost my train of thought. When you're trying to change your um, body and you're trying to uh, you know maintain certain results, like for me, like I'm kind of partially injured with this freaking uneven shoulder. I can't train the way I want. So it's sort of like I can make the choice. I can continue to eat less than, less than I should or not as good and then get fat, you know, uh, or I can kind of scale back. So it's sort of like you got to get your eating to match with your behaviors and you got to know kind of what's coming. Like Thanksgiving's coming for some of us, you know, for those that celebrate that. And we're going to pick our faces out. We get in a family and we're going to eat more than we should. And we might not be able to get to the gym or we might not be able to train like we want. So anyways. I know it was all over the place, but I kind of winged it, and I didn't have to, I, this was on a first take, uh, click like if you like these kind of videos, click thumbs down if you don't, uh, I don't make a whole lot of these, anyways, thanks for watching, uh, oh, and if you're still with me again, one more thing, if you could uh, make a suggestion for what I should talk about in my next training video, because I have two training videos, or three training videos that I haven't posted yet, I just haven't put down a voiceover to talk about something, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.